So this past weekend, I finished my most recent 100 day project. I did 100 consecutive days of sketching birds. And this is like my sixth or seventh one of these 100 day consecutive art making projects. And I've kind of lost count. I think I did my first one in 2017. And actually the first one I undertook, I didn't complete, but I've completed at least six or seven of these over the years. And also did a 366 consecutive days of art making in 2020, because that was a leap year. Some of these have been really successful and I've really learned a lot from them and others not so much. This one was really, really good. And Full transparency, I did not draw just 100 birds in 100 days. I actually drew around 300 birds over the course of the 100 days because I was doing sometimes more than one sketch in my sketchbook along with the preliminary sketching for the book project and then the compositional drawing, which is what I'm working on right now. So it was more practice than just the 100 days. But nonetheless, I did see real amazing improvement over the course of the 100 days. So what I want to do today is talk about why I started this particular 100 day project. It's actually really truly is not a 100 day project because today is day 101 and I'll probably keep doing daily sketching for as long as I can maintain the streak because I love setting and maintaining streaks. It's a thing for me. What I want to do today is talk about why I did it and what I learned from it. And also talk a little bit about developing self-discipline as an artist, because as I was thinking about recording this for you, I was thinking about what are not just the growth as an artist, you know, in terms of like artistic skills, but what else these projects have done for me and why I keep doing them. And part of it is that growth and self-discipline. And so I wanted to kind of summarize for you some of the thoughts that I had about why I think these are really good to do and why I encourage any artist to undertake these kinds of consecutive long-term art challenges. And then I want to talk just a little bit about how I avoid burnout because doing a long, many consecutive days project can really turn into burnout. And I've managed to avoid that. And I want to articulate a little bit about what I think has enabled me to not get burned out on drawing every day and particularly what has allowed me to not get burned out on drawing birds every day because I draw birds every day. So let's get started. So let's not start with the word so. The first question is why do a 100 day project? Let's try one more time. Just look at the camera. You're fine, just relax, don't get the giggles. The first question is why do a 100 day project to start with? And I think the idea really came from, oh, what is that woman's name on Instagram? Is it Luna? Ella Luna, does that sound right? I'll try to find it and put it in the description. Anyway, you know, the idea came from this woman on Instagram. Her book is called The Crossroads of Should and Must or something along those lines. I can't remember very much about her, can I? Anyway, the idea came from her. And I think there's something about amassing many days of practice that's just sort of innately appealing, right? Um, there's this sense that that it's a real accomplishment and that if we undertake these things and we we complete these accomplishments that it's gonna it's gonna do something good and of course if you're doing it on instagram you're doing it to be seen maybe 
I don't want to sound judgmental, but often if people are doing things on Instagram, they're doing it to be seen. So I think that's the reason that I got started on these, but the reason I kept doing them was because I would see these big shifts in skills. And that's the reason I started this one back in October was that I knew this book contract was coming. I was feeling very rusty on my sketching skills and really uncomfortable with the idea of having to sketch oh, 41 birds and know that I was gonna do not just 41 species, but five or so poses per species, plus the, the compositional drawings, yada, yada, yada. I was feeling rusty and I was feeling like, you know, I was kind of out of my depth. And so I thought, well, you know, if I do one of these 100 day things, I know that that's going to accelerate my, my skills and it's going to get me back up to speed. I think another thing about these 100 day projects though, is that they really immerse you in the practice and really get you in this sense of having this momentum of daily practice that's repetitive. They really establish a lot of momentum in art making. And I think there's a lot of value in that because it's easier to keep moving than to start moving after you've stopped. And certainly I find that to be true. If I stop sketching, even for a couple of days, I can tell that something goes missing. And I think that it really does establish a sort of, it's not just a psychological momentum. I think that there's probably some kind of neurological thing happening that is really, really valuable and really keeps something going that would not continue if I wasn't doing these practices. I certainly think that the feelings of accomplishment from building a body of work is really valuable also. I know that I find that very motivating, the sense that, you know, wow, I've drawn 300 birds in the past 100 days feels really cool. The, you know, looking back at filled sketchbook pages feels wonderful. I love looking at filled sketchbook pages. And in fact, one of my as I was doing my annual review a few weeks ago, I had one of these things of what am I looking forward to? And I'm looking forward to filling sketchbooks because there's a real joy and delight and satisfaction and a sense of accomplishment in doing that. But I think beyond those things, there's also the development of self-discipline. And self-discipline is something that I became enamored with as a young woman, young being like in my mid-twenties, I remember thinking as a young woman that if I could develop self-discipline, that it would solve a lot of my problems. Some of my problems were lack of focus, the feeling that I was, that I had potential, but I was wasting it, the feeling that I was wasting my life. As a young, early twenties, mid-twenties woman, I felt very bad about myself. Now, to be you know fair to that young woman, I was also in an abusive relationship. And so that did not help. And I was in a career that I didn't really, really want to be in. But nonetheless, I really longed for self-discipline and I thought self-discipline was going to solve a lot of my problems. And as it turned out, I was right about that. And I think, talking about and sharing some of the ways that I've developed self-discipline might be really helpful for you. So that's what I'd like to do next. Here are some of the things that I wished I had known when I was in my early 20s or advice that I would give to somebody who wants to develop self-discipline. And the first of these is normalizing the feeling of not feeling like doing it. There are many, many times that I don't feel like drawing or I don't feel like practicing. And it is normal to have those feelings of not wanting to do whatever it is that you have committed to yourself to do or that you are aspiring to do. And 
it is a mistake to place too much emphasis on those feelings. One of the most important skills I think I've acquired over the years is the ability to ignore that feeling of not feeling like it or some sort of discomfort around doing something that I don't feel like doing. The more normal that you can make that feeling for yourself, the better you can just simply ignore that feeling and go on and do what it is that you intended to do. The next tool is mindfulness or engagement. It's really about being fully present to what you're doing. As I was thinking about developing self-discipline, I was actually out walking. And so I recorded a lot of my notes on my voice memo. And as I was walking, I was thinking about how important it is when I'm doing these things, whether I'm drawing a bird or I'm out for a walk or I'm on the yoga mat or whatever aspect of my life it is that I've developed all this self-discipline to allow me to do these things, is that it's important for me to be present for those things. I think it enriches the experience dramatically to practice mindfulness, to show up and be fully present for it. Certainly there are some tools that you can use that will help to keep you motivated and will assist you in gaining more self-discipline. One of them is the Apple Watch. I find closing rings on my Apple Watch to be very motivating. I get kind of an ego boost out of closing my rings. The badges are kind of cool too. I enjoy earning the badges on my on my watch. So that's one way. I also use an app called Streaks. And as I mentioned earlier, I really do find setting streaks to be extremely motivating. Once I have a streak going, I don't want to break it. And so that's certainly one of the ways and one of the tools that I use to enhance my ability to do these consecutive long practice projects and also to help keep me going on things that are, you know, sort of more of my daily use of self-discipline, whether it be practicing yoga or taking walks every day or maintaining my diet in a certain way so that I can maintain my weight loss. We human beings are really made for cooperation and accountability. I think that's part of how we're hardwired as human beings. And so being in community can be of an incredible help to developing accountability to oneself as we kind of bridge that gap by having people around us to whom we can be accountable, whether there be some like a friend who's an accountability partner or a coach or a mentor. And while we're on that topic, I'd like to invite you to join my online community. It's free and you'll get small gifts and little updates from me from time to time. I'm also thinking about how I can develop something that would help artists gain that bridge to accountability because accountability is such a incredibly strong and powerful force in helping people to move forward. And I'm thinking about how do I want to help people to have access to accountability as artists. So if you'd like to know more about that, the link will be in the description below. One of the questions I get is, how do I avoid bird burnout? Because obviously I am surrounded by birds every day. I draw birds every day. I am really a very niched down artist, truly. And I think that the ways that I avoid bird burnout also help me to avoid burnout more generally. And I wanted to share those with you to give you some ideas of how you might also avoid getting burned out, especially if you're undertaking one of these long consecutive day projects. One of the first ways that I avoid burnout is the desire to keep showing up. I think this goes back all the way to when I was in my early 20s and this idea, this belief that self-discipline was really going to help me to be a better human being. And I think that that has really been true. Being self-disciplined has borne a lot of fruit for me. For example, I maintain a home yoga practice. I walk almost daily. 
I lost 20 pounds and have kept them off. I am debt free. I have a long and happy marriage. I am a skilled artist. All of these things are because of self-discipline. So self-discipline is incredibly rewarding in and of itself. And so part of the way I avoid burnout is just by really enjoying the fruits of showing up every day and enjoying the building of this long track record. There is something about creating a long track record of having done something over and over again that is really motivating and really rewarding in and of itself. And that alone has helped me to avoid burnout. But I also look for moments of delight. So, for example, as I'm doing these drawings for the book, I am running into over and over again these moments of this feeling of excitement and delight and anticipation about the paintings that are going to come out of the drawings. I get bowled over with beauty and wonder and awe. Because I draw birds every day, I see lots and lots of beautiful birds. I see color. I see feathers. I see flight. I see all these behaviors. And I don't know how, but there's a grace in the wonder that I get to experience over and over and over again. And I think experiencing that wonder and awe is in and of itself quite addicting. And there is something about showing up for a practice every day that gives you access to that kind of wonder, especially as an artist, that we get exposed to beauty and we get exposed to creativity in a way that is really quite unique. And that also helps me to avoid burnout. One of the ways I avoid bird burnout specifically is looking at birds in nature. I see birds every day. In fact, there's probably a dozen juncos in the back garden of the cottage right now as we speak. I see scrub jays coming to get peanuts. I even enjoy watching the squirrels. But being in nature and observing birds in nature also gives me a lot of motivation and helps me to avoid burnout. And then last but not least, I have a very special person in my life who never gets burned out on birds, and that's my husband, Douglas. Having his support and sort of riding the wave of his enthusiasm and his commitment and his engagement and just his everyday immersion in all things avian really helps me not to get burned out on birds. Every day he's either out looking at birds for fun or he's out gathering data. And if he's not out looking at birds for fun or gathering data, then he's analyzing data on birds or writing up papers or meeting with colleagues. And literally, conversations at my White House are about birds every day. And so I get to ride this wave of Douglas's enthusiasm and commitment. Now, granted, not everybody has somebody in their life, especially my mate. You know, I'm very blessed that this is my mate that I get to spend my whole life with. And granted, not everybody has a person like that in their lives. But this is where we come back to this partnership and idea of having either some kind of an accountability partnership with another artist working with a mentor or working with a coach who helps you to maintain that joy and enthusiasm and gives you their perspective on what you're working on. And that in and of itself is very energizing and very motivating. One of the last things I wanted to mention is what if your 100 day project or long consecutive art challenges not helping you? You're not growing. Are you bored? Are you really are burned out? What then? Do you keep going? Do you stop? I have always kept kind of rules for myself, especially in the past several ones of these I did, certainly when I did the 366. My rule was showing up for five minutes a day. And if after five minutes I didn't want to continue, I could just stop. 
on the 100 days that I just finished, my rule was that I wanted to draw at least one bird, that I wanted to sketch at least one bird. It didn't even have to be a good sketch. Just as long as I showed up and I felt like I really made an effort, then I felt like I had completed that day successfully. Sometimes I found that when I'm not growing in one of these, it's because I've gotten really lackadaisical, that I'm not putting forth any real effort, that I'm no longer engaged, I'm not trying, that the practice becomes very perfunctory, or I'm just going through the motions. Often, just recognizing that that's the problem is enough to shake me out of it. But not always. And sometimes there are seasons in our lives where we're doing a practice any kind of practice, yoga practice, exercise, any kind of practice, meditation, you name it, that we've done it for a while and we're kind of over it. So you can ask yourself, is this the right practice for me? Is this really the thing that I want to grow in self-discipline? Or is this, you know, my self-discipline better used somewhere else? I know some people do these projects and they do them like six days a week or five days a week. That personally has never worked for me. Drawing, for me specifically, developing as an artist and speaking as an artist, sketching every day has an especial magic to it that I want to maintain and I really want to be touching that every single day. And it makes a great deal of difference to me to do so. But if you are someone who feels that having a rest day would benefit you and that you're not concerned that that rest day is going to turn into a three, five, ten weeks long interruption in your practice, then I'd say, you know, take a rest and see how that does for you. But also pay attention to how you respond to interruptions. Personally, I don't respond very well to interruptions in certain kinds of things. And I know that if I get interrupted, that that really derails me in a way that is very negative. So pay attention to that. And coming back to the whole accountability thing that I've been talking about off and on throughout this entire video, there is something about having a partner with whom to discuss how this is going and getting feedback if you have someone especially another artist who can look at your work with you and give you some feedback or give you some suggestions having a mentor also super helpful in that regard or just an artist friend someone with whom you can discuss what's going right what's going wrong and get some feedback from them sometimes that can be really helpful as well so I hope that this has been helpful for you. I'd love to hear your questions if you have any. And if you'd like to know more about my 2021 art practice, here's the video on that review. Hope you enjoy it. Thanks for watching. See you again next time.